Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got an episode of Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. I love doing these episodes. They're one of my favorite ones because I can just kind of kick back and talk about a bunch of fragrances that I love. Uh, and that's kind of the whole reason that I wanted to do this channel. And uh, today we've got some doozies. Now, as a refresher for Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances, so this um, category of episodes, if you will, is going to uh, focus on, obviously, discontinued fragrances. But don't forget, this is not going to be the first time that I've talked about these on the channel. You've probably seen them in other videos or talked about in relation to other fragrances, but this will be the first time that they have made an appearance on Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. Okay, so there's an entire playlist you can go and click on, and you can see one through five, I believe this is the sixth episode, if I'm not mistaken. But um, none of these have been included on any of those previous episodes. According to my spreadsheet, I do have a master spreadsheet here. And as long as I didn't forget something and I'm doubling it up, these should all be new the first time they're being mentioned on the Ramsey Ramblings episode. So let's get into this because I do have a bunch of them. And again, I just kind of pick a handful, throw them on the desk and start talking about them. And that's the way I like to kind of run the channel. Uh, very laid back, you know, I'm not precise with a uh, certain number. This is, you know, that's why I do this is not a top 10 because I just like to talk about however many I want. If it's eight, if it's 20, if it's 50, you know, I'm, I'm free to kind of, um, you know, I'm free to kind of do my own thing and I really enjoy that. But first we're going to do scent of the day and I don't know if you can tell by the cap what this is, but this is um, a very special fragrance to me. Um, I actually planned on wearing something new and doing an early impression video today. And you guys ever had one of those days where you just kind of wake up and you're like, I can't wear something new. I have to wear something that I love. Uh, and this caught my eye and I just instantly switched because I always pick out my fragrance the night before. Uh, but today it was the morning of. This This actually changed my mind. Uh, and it's a fragrance called Bellamy by the Great House of Hermes. This is a vintage shaker bottle. Thank you, Anuj. And um, what ended up happening, there's a little bit of a story today. So I wore this today as my scent of the day. And I had to go get my car inspected for the state. In Texas, they make us do it every year, which is overkill. But, you know, the powers that be want their money. Uh, and so I was at the place getting inspected, going through comments on my channel. And Dushan, who um, is one of my favorite subscribers, he actually uh, mentioned that he just got his shaker bottle in the mail and he's wearing it, and he loves it, and I said, guess what? It's my scent of the day, too, so we're connected by scent today, brother, um, and so it is a fantastic. It's my favorite leather. It made my favorite fragrance of all time. Basically, I did a top 100 countdown, and Bellamy ended up coming in number one. Uh, this has already been featured on uh, one of these episodes, I, I think, um, Maybe not. Maybe it has not been featured yet, but we're going to save it. We're going to save it if it hasn't been featured yet. It's not on the master spreadsheet yet, uh, so it must not have made one of these episodes yet, but uh, this is just my scent of the day, so I'll, I'll be able to talk about it more on a further episode, but um, if you get a chance to find this bottle in the original shaker formulation or the first reformulation, that's actually my favorite I think I like the first reformulation even better than the shaker bottle. It's a little bit more classy. Uh, whoever did it, maybe Jean-Claude Elena, I'm not sure, but they did a fantastic reformulation on that one. Now, the new one with the black cap that looks like this, this is equipage geranium, but this is what the bottle looks like now, which I really love this bottle too. Uh, I think this is very classy as well. Um, is not as good. I don't, I feel like it's lost a step. It's not worth it. I would probably say go for um, Bellamy Vetiver if you're struggling. But um, um, actually, Bellamy can't make this list because it's not discontinued. What am I thinking about? Although I could do a previous formulation. But um, yes, if you can get the first or second reformulation of Bellamy, get it. Okay, so let's go to pick number one. And pick number one on this list is going to be one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Uh, I don't know how you would classify it. Maybe as like a spicy, woody, maybe like a amber fougere. I'm not 100% sure how it would be classified, but um, it's YSL's Jazz uh, in the 
black and white piano key bottle. Fantastic back when they used to actually care about presentation. The juice inside is, I mean, just fantastic. It's amazing juice. It is spicy. It's woody. It has that late 80s, early 90s. I think Chris from Scentland called it sunshine in a bottle, and I completely agree with that. Um, or he called that style, that era of fragrances, sunshine in a bottle. If you smelled like, um, if you smell things like Guerlain's Heritage, if you smell things like Escada Por Homme, if you smell things like Salvador by Salvador Dali, um, then you'll kind of have an idea. Jazz does kind of go its own way. There's a little bit of anise here. There's no anise in fragrances like Heritage and stuff like that. Um, but there's a spicy carnation mid. There's a beautiful leather oak moss tobacco dry down. And it does have that amberiness with a touch of fougere. So maybe you could qualify it as an amber fougere. Uh, because it does have the lavender, geranium, tonka fougere. Um, you know, proper traditional structure, but then it also has, um, you know, that ambery style that started to come into play with fragrances like Chanel's, Por or, I'm sorry, um, not Chanel's Pour Monsieur, but uh, Pierre Cardin's Pour Monsieur from 72, and then it was kind of taken and run with. Um, there's a lot of other fragrances that kind of rift off of that style, um, but this is an amazing fragrance. I'm so glad to have this. I have a backup and I have a potential another backup coming if I can ever get fragrances from England to Texas, which one day, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna been like a year struggle, but uh, one day it's gonna happen. I can't wait for that day. Uh, okay, next. Oh God, Bell and Me is so good. Okay, next uh, is going to be a flanker of jazz, which by the way, um, jazz is completely discontinued according to Parfumo. I go off of Parfumo. Um, and some of these are, you know, either the concentration is discontinued or if I put them in a, in a list, um, and it's not discontinued, maybe that particular version has been discontinued and then they reformulated it. Jazz is completely discontinued according to Parfumo, as is this particular flanker. I think all three flankers are. This is Jazz Prestige. So this is the second one on the list. You can see they uh, changed the bottle up a bit. I still really like it, but I like the original bottle better because it does not let light in. So if you take a look, this one, there's no light getting to the juice. I really like that. It keeps the juice um, fresher because light is the biggest enemy of your juice. And so the bottle does look cool because it starts out with the old school white and black and then they um, went to the glass. But uh, Jazz Prestige uh, came out, so the original Jazz came out in 88. This came out in 93. And um, it does keep the anise, you know, bergamot opening, but it starts to go in a different direction almost instantly. There's fruity notes here. So you get some, um, you know, you get... You know what's interesting is in the Ghost Perfumer, the guy uh, that wrote it talked about how Pierre Bourdon um, did many fragrances with pineapple-like tops. He really started to play with that trend. I don't know if Pierre Bourdon was the perfumer here. Uh, I don't think he was, but um, Jean-Francois Laty was the perfumer of the original jazz. But what's interesting is Pierre Bourdon did the next flanker. I don't know who did this, this one, Prestige. But it is interesting that there's this pineapple, um, you know, fruity melon-like thing going on in the opening. Uh, and this was all the way back in 1993. Uh, and so it takes that jazz uh, DNA and it makes it a little bit more playful with the fruity notes to me. It's not as buttoned up. It's not as proper, if you will. I really like proper fragrances, as you can tell. Bellamy uh, is a very proper fragrance. My second choice, Antaeus, proper, you know, fragrance. Um, and this is a little bit more playful. This is not as serious. It's not as buttoned up. It's, you know, it's un loosen up the tie, take off the shirt, you know, unbutton the shirt, sit at the bar. That kind of vibe is what I get from this. You're relaxing a little bit more. Um, the claim to fame with this is that there's real Mysore sandalwood in the base. Uh, anyway, that's what the... Um, that's what the box says anyways. Uh, the box actually says Mysore Sandalwood. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a good fragrance. It's not that, uh, it's a bad fragrance. It's, it's actually a really good fragrance, especially for the crap that these designers, especially for the crap YSL is putting out now. But, um, I don't like it as much as the original. The original is, you know, top of the jazz, uh, totem pole as far as I'm concerned. I do really like the way that the geranium is used. There is still that old school oak moss and leather in the base with that amber, you know, you could say this is still an amber fougere, but more playful, more youthful. You know, that might be a good word. More youthful. Um, oh, God, pella me, man. Um, this even has a little bit of castorium, I think, in the base. Nothing crazy, but just enough to keep it, you know, balanced, keep it interesting so it's not too playful. Um, but, uh, yes, Jazz Prestige is very hard to find nowadays, but if you want to smell a beautiful, proper Mysore sandalwood from a neat, from a designer, you know, that was only 1993, which, you know, doesn't seem like that long ago, but, um, and then we will talk about Pierre Bourdon's Flanker, uh, which is also discontinued. It came out in 1998 and it's called Live Jazz. So there's the bottle, Live Jazz. And live jazz is, um, you know, by this point in Pierre Bourdon's career, 1998, remember in 81, he created Koros. In 85, he created Green Irish Tweed. In 87, he created Cool Water. Uh, and so, you know, if you, if you take that, those creations right there, you've got Koros, one of the most, um, in my opinion, one of it was my third favorite fragrance on my top 100 countdown. Uh, it's one of the most amazing animalic fragrances ever created, ever. Forget designer or niche. Um, and then for a you know um, for a man to create something like that, and then with his very next fragrance try to create the next special freshness. You know to go from something that was basically the greatest animalic fragrance to the greatest fresh fragrance. I mean, to me, that shows genius. You know, when you can uh, go completely the opposite direction. You know, there's some perfumers nowadays that specialize in a certain genre. So if they make a perfume, you know you're getting a uh, amber fragrance, or you know you're getting a fougere, or you know you're getting a chiffre, right? For Pierre Bourdon to go from one extreme to another in the same decade and have hits. I mean, not just I did it to did it, but do it, but really change the way that the entire fragrance world thought about, uh, you know, a reference fragrance. Koros is a reference animalic fragrance. Cool Water is a reference fresh fragrance. And it's different enough from, um, you know, uh, Dracar Noir that you can never say Pure Word On is copying something. Um, and so, yes, I mean, that's, to, to me, that's genius, but I, I, I say, I tell that story to basically say that by this point in his career, a decade after Cool Water, he was on the really fresh train. I mean, he was, everything he was making was citrusy and fresh. Um, and, you know, this has this bitter lemon with mint, excuse me, and grapefruit, coriander, which I love, uh, rhubarb leaf, which is interesting. Amber, vanilla, and cedar in the base. Beautiful fresh fragrance. Beautiful for summer. You can just lather this stuff on. I mean, it's inoffensive. Uh, it doesn't have as much to do with jazz, uh, the original, as Jazz Prestige does. It's almost like a completely different fragrance. Um, but it is a good freshie. And when this was 20 30 bucks at discounters, I mean, what a deal this was. Now people are paying hundreds for it. Um... It's not worth hundreds, I'll tell you that right now, but it is a very good fragrance. If you find a partial or something at a good deal, get it. Okay, sticking with the House of YSL, uh, one of my favorite designers of all time, even though it could be argued that this is maybe structurally not the greatest designer of all time, and I, I don't think I would argue that point, but for me personally, it's just one of my favorite designers of all time. It's called YSL M7. This is what the original M7 bottle looked like with the sprayer off-centered a little bit. Uh, and this is a tester so you can kind of really read the back. Uh, you can see the short ingredients right there. And you can see the notes, which is right here. Bergamot, agarwood, underlined agarwood, uh, oud, 
vetiver and amber. That's it. Those are the only uh, notes listed. Now, there are others that come. Like, uh, you'll get some orange when you spray. You'll get this cola-like vibe in the beginning, which I really like. This is one of the reasons I prefer this over the M7 Oud Absolu. Um, is because you get this um, orange cola, you know, orange with cola. Uh, and rosemary, which keeps it masculine. Rosemary does a fantastic job of, at least in my head, probably because there was so much rosemary in Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. And Paco Rabanne Pour Homme is a reference masculine. It was also my father's signature scent. So personally for me, when I smell rosemary in a fragrance, I instantly go masculine, right? Uh, oud with vetiver, which is another masculine note. Uh, amber. There is some musk here. Um, but it's just a... It's just such a well-done designer. And um, I don't think this did very well. But I do think it ended up propelling Tom Ford or... Um, compelling Tom Ford to release Oud Wood in 2007, and that's the one that really took off. This was like the trial. Um, and people do like it, though. I mean, if you wear this out and about, you will get noticed, because it's different than what people are used to smelling, but it's probably a cold weather fragrance, but I've already said before, I don't care about weather anymore. I wear whatever the hell I want. I mean, it's 90 degrees today in Texas, and I'm wearing uh, old-school vintage Bellamy, and I don't give a shit. It's just amazing. Oh, um, okay, let's go to the house of Jean Patou, and we've got two from the house of Jean Patou today, and the first is the big one, uh, and again, I've talked about this on my channel before, but it's never made this series, so here we go, Jean Patou Pour Homme. Now, Patou Pour Homme, you can see how much juice I have left there, is a special fragrance, it's a special, you can see right there, it says My Source Sandalwood too. Um, this fragrance is a spicy, woody, uh, scent, basically, that, um, used a couple notes. Jean Carlio loved using high-quality Mysore sandalwood and loads of oak moss. That's one of the reasons the old-school guys or the guys like me who love vintage fragrances go goo-goo gaga for Patou, for Patou, Jean Patou's fragrances. Um, so there's bourbon vetiver, there's, uh, Virginia cedar, there's Mysore sandalwood, there's pimento, uh, clary sage, and Malabar pepper. And that's it. I mean, there's really not much else going on. But because there's not much else going on, there's probably oak moss too, even though it's not listed. Um, because there's not much else going on, it creates a very unique profile. Very singular and very unique. And, um, I usually wear this on special occasions, so it has a lot of uh, nice scent memories attached to it. And uh, you can see, I mean, probably 40 mils worth of juice left. 35, 40 mils. Um, so yes, it will be cherished and worn. And, um, you know, don't... I will say this. Don't pay $1,500 for that. It's not worth it. I mean, um, if you're made of money and it doesn't matter, sure. But uh, if money does matter to you somewhat, don't pay $1,500 for that. Um, you know, that's just the scalpers trying to take advantage of it. Go buy Dunhill Blend 30. I mean, I got a 250 mil, 250, uh, 250 mil bottle for about 300 bucks or 350. I can't remember. Um, and you know, that's 250 mil. This was half, this was about half full when I got it and I paid 400. Um, and so the value for money on Dunhill Blend 30 versus this is through the roof. Or go get Charles Jordan Un Ohm. You can still find bottles of that for 50 to 100 bucks. Um, okay, another Jean Patou, which came out in 87. So seven years after Patou Pour Homme. It's a female targeted fragrance, but it is absolutely masculine in my opinion. In my opinion, I think it leans masculine. It's called Ma Liberté. Beautiful bottle. Look at the back with the Jean Patou logo, uh, the, the J and the P, and look at the juice. Oh, God. This stuff. I like, I'm going to say something crazy here, okay? So bear with me. Um, but I like this just as much as I like this. There's no drop-off. Even though this is a tenth of the price, you can find um, these 100 mil bottles. Are they 100 mil bottles? What are these? How much is it? 
Tell me. How big are you? Okay, I think they're 100 mil bottles. I'm not sure. Um, but let's just say they're 100 mil bottles. Um, ah, here we go. 50 mil. Okay, fine. So this is a 50 mil bottle, but I've seen 100 mil bottles for 100 to 150. So let's call it a tenth. A tenth to 15% of the price of Patu Poron. And I enjoy this just as much. This is a 50 mil bottle. This is the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette is also beautiful. Um, what makes this so amazing is it's a masculine heliotrope, in my opinion. Um, and it's masculine because it has lavender, which is a traditional masculine scent or note. And it has loads of spices. So you get things like um, nutmeg and clove, traditional spicy notes. Um, there's a touch of rose to mix in with the heliotrope. Um, but that heliotrope spice combo just creates this unbelievable, I mean, smell. It's, it's amazing, honestly. Patchouli, sandalwood, cedar, cinnamon, vetiver, vanilla. Um, it's, it's enticing. It's... Um, you know, if you like the way that the heliotrope is used in Le Bleu, or you want something maybe a little bit more masculine, this is it. I mean, this is, there's no other question. This is, this is what you go for. And it's such a great value for money. Jean Carlio fragrances are so sought after because of the high quality ingredients and the way that he used things. And there's no way you can get this, even if you only get the 50 mil and you pay a hundred bucks, you can't find a 50 mil uh, you know, Tom Ford 50 mils go for 350 uh, at, at the store. You know, forget something that's discontinued and then marked up. So you just can't find this type of fragrance, this kind of money for this kind of fragrance any longer. This is still great. Don't get me wrong. It's just the price of this has gone so high that if you're talking about value for money, I'd go for this. Now, if you have unlimited resources, absolutely. Patu Pour Homme is a grail, masculine scent. Uh, but Ma Liberté deserves much more hype. It is, um, knock you off your chair good. Remember how I said, um, that Tietro Alla Scala is like a knock you off your chair good fragrance? So is this, Ma Liberté. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Jacques Bogart. And, uh, they don't discontinue many fragrances, but they did discontinue this one. This is Witness. So I've got the 100 mil spray. And I've got the uh, 30 mil uh, spray, 30 mil spray and 100 mil spray. Um, and this fragrance is very interesting to me because, why am I having trouble finding the, uh, how big these bottles are today? How big are you? I think it's 100 mil. Nope, it's a 50 mil. This is a 50 mil as well. So 50 mil and 30 mil. So I've got 80 mils of juice, let's say, 70 mils, because I put a little bit of a dent in the 30 mil. Um, Witness is a fragrance that uh, I was talking with someone the other day and they said, Ramsey, I love Romeo Jiggly per Womo. Uh, do you have any recommendations that are close to it? And I said, no, there's nothing close to it, period. But that cinnamon note, the way cinnamon was used in the early 90s was, is unique to, to this nose anyways. And... Um, the cinnamon used in things like Balenciaga Pour Homme, which is right there. You can see that Balenciaga Pour Homme cap right there uh, from 1990. Witness from 1992. Uh, Abbasin Pour Homme from 91. Uh, the, the cinnamon used in those kind of fragrances, Romeo Jiggly Per Uomo, had a very distinct quality to it. So just the cinnamon note, forget the whole composition, but just the cinnamon note, um, this really stands out. It punches way above its weight class. I love the way that it was used back then. And um, they mixed it with orange and lemon and mugwort, which is a type of artemisia. So you get this green, spicy geranium, um, resinous base of benzoin, patchouli, sandalwood, and styrax. And so even though there's no vanilla, that waxy, you know, flat, very thin layer of styrax in the base um, gives it much more heft and um, 
the first couple minutes might put you off. It takes a little bit to settle down. It's not that it's a cheap fragrance. I just feel like the blend takes a couple of minutes. The opening is very green, like the bottle. So you may spray this and go, oh, wow. I mean, it's not for me, but wait, don't write it off. If you write it off in five minutes, you'll do yourself a disservice, okay? So Jacques Bogart, witness. Okay, next, we're gonna go to um, the master. Uh, Edmund Runitska created a fragrance for Dior called Diorissimo. Diorissimo is the greatest Lily of the Valley fragrance ever created. Um, if you can find these older bottles, do it. Basically, uh, Francois Demachy reformulated it in 2009. So the fragrance itself is still in existence, but this version is long discontinued. This is the one you want, or one of the older ones, basically. Um, basically, what ended up happening is that uh, the scent of Lily of the Valley cannot be extracted. Uh, so there's no natural essence of Lily of the Valley. So it had to be reconstructed through perfume notes. Um, and, um, there'd been, there had been these different Lily of the Valley fragrances before, but in 56, Edmund Rudnitska succeeded in, with his reconstruction of this flower, basically using an ingredient called, uh, hydroxycitronellol. And, uh, it's the main aroma component of the Lily of the Valley, which I think might now be banned. And so that's why I was saying, if you can find this, grab it while you can. Um, especially if you're a fan of floral or Lily of the Valley scent, excuse me. Okay, so, um, not my favorite thing to wear, as you can see. I love wearing stuff like this, and I do love this. Um, oh, God. Oh, it's just amazing. Uh, but definitely worth owning as a reference. Okay, we're halfway through. We're under the half an hour mark, so we're making good time. Next. We're going to go to the House of Roja. Yes, Roja uh, does have discontinuations, and we've talked about a couple. So far uh, on this um, Ramsey's Ramblings video, we've talked about Majestic Aoud, which I did a full review on, and it's it's a joke if you're, expect, if you're expecting a real Oud fragrance, but if you're open-minded to something different, it's not a bad fragrance. It's just not an oud fragrance, in my opinion. Uh, we did Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and we've got two more today. So the first one is going to be this, which is Oh, the Exclusive Parfum, which I've also got a video on. If you go to my Roja playlist, you can find it. And Oh, the Exclusive Parfum, um, I think, is a predecessor to the moon. Now... Um, there are people out there, I'm going to say this politically, there are people out there that don't think Roja is a perfumer. In fact, um, um, Miss Delacorte, who was basically head of the perfume, you know, uh, operation at Guerlain from the early 2000s on, uh, up until a certain point, I can't remember when she left. Um, but, uh, Miss Delacorte basically said that, uh, Roja Dove was a perfume artist, not a perfumer. And so that's what she said. Don't, don't, don't sue me, Roja. Don't throw your Louboutin slipper at me over here. I'm just saying. Um, that's what she said. And, um, or is it Mr. Delacorte? Now I can't remember. I don't, I, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, I'm getting old. But, um, either way, the story is people, there are people out there who don't think Roja is a perfumer. Shocking, I know, but um, my guess is, is if he isn't a perfumer, that this was created by Julian Rasconet, because there's a lot of similarities between this, Rare Fidelis by Histoire de Parfum, uh, this, which I will do a full review on very soon, ST DuPont Perfect Tobacco, which if you want Julian Rasconet DNA, and you don't want to pay big money for Royal Oud or for The Moon, or for a discontinued Roja, get this. This is a Julian Rasconet that is a hundred bucks. And it really should be called Perfect Oud. It's a designer Oud. He basically, Julian Rasconet uh, is an interesting character because he ended up moving to Dubai where there was a lack of perfumers. One of the few parts in the world where perfumers were really needed. And so he kind of learned that Arabic, you know, style of perfumery. And I think he's an amazing perfumer. I love the moon. I love Royal Oud. I love, um, 
I like this, even though I don't have a full bottle. And it is, it is a little bit sweet for my taste, but I mean, you can't win them all. But it is a good perfume. Uh, and this seems like a little bit of a forefather to The Moon by Frederick Mall. Um, and I don't know if that's true or not, or if I'm just talking out my ass, but, um, it smells like it's, it smells like it's him, you know, it, 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 if you gave me one guess, I would guess Julian Raskinet here, that would be my guess, um, and I could be wrong, and maybe Roge is the greatest perfumer of all time, but, um, yeah, that's, but that's the story, it's, um, a woody, spicy, uh, Middle Eastern style fragrance under the name Oh the Exclusive Parfum. Don't don't ask me what the hell that means, but um, it is a it is a good fragrance. It's just you have to be okay with that loud Middle Eastern style. Okay, totally different type of Roja, and this is called Oligarch. Now Oligarch uh, is still available, but only in the parfum form. This version right here in Eau de Parfum is discontinued, okay? So that's why it's on the list. Um, the version with the gold cap like this, the Eau de Parfum concentration is discontinued. And um, Oligarch smells like Terre Hermes. Yes, it does. I mean, there's just no getting around it, but it smells like Roja, Roja did up, okay? So if you've got the disposable income, and you want to see what Roja did on top of Terre de Hermes. He made it into more of a fruity chiffre style. He has a lot of beautiful, succulent, fruity notes here. It's a really great, wonderful work fragrance. Very posh. Um, black currant and, and apple and coconut and actual coconut. Not castorium, but, you know, the search engine shows coconut. No, real coconut. Um, there's a lot going on here. Very beautiful fragrance. Great work fragrance. Uh, but they discontinued the Eau de Parfum. They put it in the X-ray bottle and they doubled the price. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that at all. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Vial. And this is Vial Pour Homme. Uh, beautiful. Almost like Wolfenstein, uh, you know, logo. And um, Vial Pour Homme is a 1980s fragrance, so it came out the exact same year as the gem people are willing to spend, you know, I don't know, thousand bucks on, two thousand bucks on, who knows what that is anymore. Uh, Vial Pour Homme, uh, I think is more reasonably priced, 150, 200. I've seen a bottle at 300, but nothing, you know, a third the price of Patu Pour Homme at least. And um, it's, it's leathery, mossy, there's old school lavender and rosemary and spices. There's Petit Gran, which is the, um, I think Petit Gran is derived from like the leaves of the um, orange blossom plant or orange tree, something like that. It's something like that. The leaf, you know, the extract from the leaves. Um, and there's lots of spices in here. So if you like the way that the spices are done in Thierry Vasser's reformulation of Derby, not the original, but Thierry Vasser's reimagining of Derby in 2005, you'll love this. The spices in here are beautiful. Um, they really are. I wore that to work the other day, and it's just, I mean, it just, it just annihilates. I think one guy was wearing um, Alfred Sung High, H-E-I, High. Uh, and you know, another guy's wearing Sauvage and another guy's wearing Blue de Chanel and I'm wearing Vile Pour Homme from 1980. Like, Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I just, it just stamps your authority on everybody. You know, it just, just annihilates Sauvage and Blue de Chanel and high karate and all that stuff. Well, not high karate, but height. Uh, okay, next we're going to go to the house of Pharrell Williams. Now, this is done by Comme de Garçon. You can see right... Whoops, where does it say Comme de Garçon? You can see right here, Comme de Garçon, made by Comme de Garçon. Um, and this is called Girl. Girl uh, by Pharrell Williams is... Um, a take on Fahrenheit. It's a niche take on Fahrenheit. Uh, Christine uh, Auguste Ville and Antoine Lee worked on this, believe it or not. 
And um, this is lavender, white pepper, neroli, iris, styrax, violet, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, and cedar. If you like Fahrenheit, I would highly recommend you give this a sniff. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a different take on Fahrenheit to me. And it's very well done. Very well done. Very enjoyable. And I got this. The best part is I got this for like 20 bucks when no one wanted these. You know, this tester. Uh, now they're going for 100 or, or 150 Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of Victor and Rolf. And uh, this is Antidote. Look at this bottle with the wax seal. Um, beautiful presentation. The only shitty thing about the bottle is the atomizer broke, which it also did on my Midnight in Paris bottle. Uh, but the fragrance itself is an amazing designer. This is 2006, okay? And um, the, the perfumer is Pierre Wargnay, who created many, many of my favorite fragrances. Uh, Hugo Boss number one. I mean, he's a, he's a legend. And Eleanor Massanet. And he also created Dracar Noir, by the way. Uh, Pierre Wargnay. And um, Tenere. He created Tenere, who Pierre uh, Bourdon claims he actually won the brief for Tenere, but then the guy who gave it to him died in a skiing accident or something. And um, the new person who took over the uh, Tenere brief decided to go in a different direction. How about that for crazy? But um, yes, Antidote by Victor and Rolf, 2006. Uh, it's spicy. It's fresh. It's ever his fragrance is basically everything is what's amazing. There's freshness, there's citruses, there's mint, there's spices of cardamom, there's lavender, there's florals, there's freesia, there's geranium, orange blossom. Uh, it's a little bit cinnamony and nutmeg. There's some vanilla. It does go a little sweet in the dry down. There's leather, there's oak moss, there's iris, there's sandalwood, there's woods, there's musk. There's everything in this fragrance. And it's so... Um, it's, it's so uh, artistic, but it's not going to show itself to you in the first wear, okay? So if you're the kind of person that sprays and smells and goes, I understand this fragrance. Nope, not for me. Or yes, it's for, you know, if you're that kind of person, you'll dismiss this. I promise you, you will. Because you'll smell this and go, yeah, it's pleasant, but it's not, I don't know what the hype's all about. That's what you'll say. Um, but if you wear this over and over and over again, you will understand the genius of this fragrance. It'll take you a couple weeks, maybe even a month. Oh, but it's really, really good. Now, here's the problem with this fragrance is it's not a beast. It'll last about five hours on your skin and that's it, it's gone. So you gotta reapply. Uh, but with a 100 mil bottle, actually 120 mil bottle, go right ahead, reapply away is what I think. Um, but, um, I usually wear it in the warmer weather because it doesn't stand up to the cold, but the cold brings out different aspects to the fragrance. So it's a very versatile, could easily be a year-round signature scent. Um, and one, it's a, it's a fragrance for fragrance lovers. How about that? It's a fragrance for fragrance lovers. That's the best way I can put it. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, down to the final four. Um, so this is one that the fragrance itself is still available, but not in this concentration. This is Parfum d'Empire Musk Tonkin in Eau de Parfum. Now the Eau de Parfum is discontinued, okay? Uh, the extra is what's being sold now. Oh, oof. my one of my favorite musk fragrances of all time. Seriously, this beats out um, Musk Kublai Khan. It beats out Musk Ravageur. Even in the vintage, even in the vintage matte cap, this beats it out. Um, you know, the only thing that this can't compete with is the real Musk from uh, Aris Ladore, that kind of stuff. You know, you start talking real Musk, Bortnikoff, Aris Ladore, this is going to have a hard time competing. But anything else, any niche Musk, any... Um, you know, Creed, Roja, MFK, those kind of musks that you, you smell, Serge Boutons, this is better, I'm telling you. Um, oh, it's just, you know what it is, is it's the mixture of um, 
that synthetic musk, whatever it's called, muscanone or, you know, whatever the synthetic deer musk is that they use with Hyrax. This and Salome are two of the most, um, two of the most, uh, amazing proper uses of Hyrax in, uh, you know, uh, a modern day fragrance, let's say. Hyrax is a very hard note to use, extremely hard, because if it's not used properly, you it'll kill you. It'll kill the fragrance. Here, it's used to perfection. With the musk, there's also this resinous myrrh, and the note that really stopped me from buying this fragrance for the longest time is uh, tuberose. There's a tuberose note in here, but it's done so well, and it's mixed with everything else so well that it doesn't matter. You know, tuberose is usually a no-no for me. It's pretty rough. Um, um, at least for a fragrance I can wear out and about in the day. I mean, I have poison and all that stuff, but I usually just wear those to bed. This, I can wear this anywhere, anytime, any place. It's, it's amazing. Um, I love this stuff. It is, I'm in love with this fragrance. It is um, out, again, outside of the real deer musk that Arise the Dore or stuff like that uses, this is the best. This is the best synthetic musk I've ever smelled. It's so good. And it's so animalic. Um, but again, the Eau de Parfum is discontinued. I've never smelled the X-Ray. Okay? So don't buy the X-Ray and be mad if you don't like it. Um, I can't vouch for that one. But you might not like that either because it is animalic and it does have some floral aspects. Okay, last three. Last three, and again, these are not ranked or anything, but um, this fragrance I've been hunting for for a while. This was a great example of me buying a decant, loving it, hunting for the fragrance, and being patient. I saw bottles of this online for upwards of $1,000, okay? I got this for $160, and um, it's absolutely real. Uh, and the only thing it's missing is the top. There's no Tom Ford logo on the top, but everything else is perfect. And it's called Vert de Encens, Green Incense. And, um, wow. What a private blend. You know, most private blends nowadays have been a letdown and disappointment. They put out crap, you know, effing fabulous and lost cherry and... You know, even that new one they put out, Ebene, Fume, or whatever the hell it is, is not that good. This, though, this is worthy of the private blend name, in my opinion. Green, resinous, um, Antoine Mason Du and uh, Shyamala Mason Du, who are husband, wife, or maybe husband, ex, ex-husband and wife, they might not be married anymore, and Jan Vasnier created this. It was a, it was a, triple threat, a trio, uh, the frankincense, the pine resin, and then remember how I said there's a masculine heliotrope note in Ma Liberté? Well, guess what? It's here too. There's a masculine heliotrope note in Vert de Encens because the heliotrope adds texture, okay? It adds texture. It's like, uh, it's like when the dentist takes a mold of your tooth and pulls that putty out and it's molded to your tooth. That's what Heliotrope does to this fragrance. But the star is the frankincense, the tree sap, you know, the balsams, the resins. Uh, and it's so, it's, it's such a great incense fragrance. I mean, oh, it's spicy. It's, I mean... I can't believe they discontinued this. I hope they did it because they couldn't get materials or for whatever reason, you know, or maybe it won't pass the new regulations from IFRA, but my God, what a fragrance. Vert de Ensens. Best from the Vert line, in my opinion. Okay, final two. They're both from the house of uh, Jean de Prez. Jean de Prez. Uh, the first one is Bala Versailles. Now, I, I did an entire video on this. Oh, this is the Parfum. Look at the stain that the real civet. Look at the stain right here. Um, and what a beautiful flacone, by the way. Oh, there's, look at that.
amazing. Oh, wow. Um, it's just, um, you know, this is, uh, if you like, the, if you like fragrances like Salome by Papillon, if you like Musk Ravageur, uh, it, it's in that category, you know, but this is from 1962. Uh, Jean Duprez put this out. This was Michael Jackson's signature scent. Apparently Liz Taylor showed this to Michael Jackson and he fell in love with it. Um, it's a little bit floral. There's some rose and neroli and orange blossom. Uh, there is some lilac and uh, orris. Um, it's powdery, it's resinous, but it's all about basically the base, the benzoin, the balsams, the vanilla, and the civet. Uh, and it's just a ball of civet. I bet you this stuff will be good 200 years in the future. I mean, the civet just, you know, uh, it's just it's just a ball of civet. It's supposed to smell like what the ladies in the Palace of Versailles smelled like, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, imagine American Revolution. Imagine, you know, imagine the king um, being you know, under pressure from his people because they were hungry and starving and he's giving money from the coffers to Benjamin Franklin and these American um, colonists who are rebelling from the English crown. Uh, and then, of course, he ended up losing his head uh, in an unfortunate accident. But, um, yes, I mean, that's it recreates that. Imagine that uh, 100, 200, 300 years ago. And... Um, I mean, it just, it gives you that, it definitely gives you that impression that unwashed skin, you know, with some sweat, let's say you've been dancing, it's animalic, there's passion, it's, it's sexual, it's, um, I love it. I love the fragrance. I mean, I, I, it, it's not a, it's not a work appropriate fragrance probably, but if you want to just sit in your house all day and, or, and, and, you know, smell some amazing civet, Bala Versailles is a good one. It's not as good as Coros, but it's good. And finally, we're going to do an early impression on this right here, right now, because damn it, I want to know what this smells like. Um, this is the final discontinued fragrance on the list. By the way, I've got my Arise Ladore blotter. And go to his website right now, because apparently his new collection is up. The uh, Atar, Indian Atar collection is up. Go get your Indian Atar now if you're interested. Uh, so this is Bala Ver This is, I'm sorry, not Bala Versailles. It's called Versailles Pour Homme by Jean de Prez. And beautiful bottle. It, this is a splash, so I'm just going to take this, dip it in. I'm going to give it a little dipstick. Did I get any? Sorry, I'm not 100% sure if any's coming out here. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, Versailles Pour Homme. What are you? So, you are... Really spicy and uh, citrusy and green in the opening. Spicy, leathery. There's supposed to be like this um, pimento note too, just like in Patu Pour Homme. Came out the same year, by the way, 1980 as Patu Pour Homme. So there's three from 80. There's Vial Pour Homme, Patu Pour Homme, and Versailles Pour Homme. And... Um, I can tell you right now, I'm getting that stone pine note. There's definitely that stone pine with some fruits, florals, and a hint of leather hiding underneath. Oh, I'm going to like this. I think this will be more of a summer scent for me, personally. Even though there's leather. Uh, that greenness in, in citruses just adds this air of... Um, uh, here's the box, by the way. Versailles 
poor Ulm. Um, let's see. Oh, maybe there was a, uh, there's no, um, ingredients, is there? There is this on the bottom, which I thought was cool. Eighty percent. Sorry, eighty degrees. Um, that's how they used to do the old. It's got a hell of a stopper on it. Hell of a stopper. Look at that. Um, yeah, it's really good. I think I'm going to really enjoy this. Uh, I think this is a winner for me. The bottle with the lines matches the box. Do you notice that? It's beautiful. I love when companies take time to do a presentation. The cap is cheap, but who cares, you know? Yeah, so this is a winner. This is an absolute winner so far. Spicy Carnation. has some 70s, it feels like a 70s fragrance, even though it came out in 80. There's something about this that reminds me of the 70s. A little bit of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme in there. The way that green, you know, uh, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Um, There's something about this that's giving me a Paco Rabanne Pour Homme vibe for some reason, but uh, obviously it's different. It does its own thing. I'll have to wear it on skin. I can't wait. Can't wait to wear that and explore it. But yes, that's my Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrance. I think it's episode six, but I'll put it in the title. Uh, if you have experience with some of these, please do let me know. I hope I at least gave you a couple to put on your watch list, put on your to buy list if this is your thing, if you're into vintages like I am. Um, I love doing these videos. I love chatting with you guys. Um, and I love seeing your faces in the comments. So please leave, leave your thoughts, leave your, um, you know, leave, uh, leave your comments, likes and subscriptions always help the channel, of course. Uh, because at this point in the early in the game, like we are, we're not even at 2000 subscribers yet. I think it's about exposure, it's about getting the name out. Uh, it's always funny to me when someone first finds the channel. And they're like, holy shit, you have a ton of videos. And it's like, well, I mean, um, I do this because I enjoy it, not because I have to, but I do have a lot of videos. And um, it's because I'm a very routine-oriented person. So this is part of my routine now. I just enjoy it. I just put them out and, um, you know, hopefully for the new folks who are just finding the channel, they can just go back, watch my old videos. The really, really old ones are terrible quality. Uh, because I didn't, I had the camera backwards on one or two and, you know, stuff like that has happened. But now that it's fixed and we're kind of moving forward, um, you know, I don't have the editing skills of some of the other channels. You're not going to get cuts. You're not going to get, you know, names of the fragrances flashing on the screen. You're not going to get zoomed in shots of the bottle, with, you know, uh, from the brand and all that good stuff. Uh, you're just going to get me sitting here, press play, talk, and then press stop. But I hope there's some good content here. I hope you can feel the passion that, uh, comes from within as to why I do this. And, um, if you're a lover of discontinued or vintage fragrances like I am, I hope you're getting something out of these videos. You know, no one can know everything. No one can own everything. There's just too much. The fragrance world is too big. There is a wall of perfumes that you can hunt. And there's so many different ways that you can go about it. You can uh, buy 10 backups of your favorite fragrance and just wear it all day, every day. You can buy a couple fragrances you, you love and buy a couple backups. Or you can buy one of every single thing. And, you know, however you build your collection, you can do it your own way. Um, but sometimes I have had to be patient. Like, for example, this is a patient buy. I've had a decant of this for three years. And I finally pulled the trigger a week or two ago on this. Oh, I'm so glad I did. Um, 
And, you know, sometimes you see something and it's a opportunity like this. Uh, I've never smelled this. I, I just saw this partial bottle, blind bought it, and wow, what a, you know, it had like a mill or two missing, a couple mills missing. What a buy this was. And it was just happenstance. And so, you know, it's how you build your collection is is unique to you. But I hope these videos at least serve as somewhat of a guide. So thank you for watching, everybody. Cheers. Have a great day. And hope to see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.